Welcome guys, to part 2 of this tutorial series. In this video we will make the board scene using the tile scene we made in the previous tutorial. Before that let's fix the anchor of the tile scene. So click on the tile node, and choose top left in the layout menu. So to make the board, make a new scene with the control as the root node and name it board. Save the scene in the scenes folder in a subfolder called board. In the layout menu, choose top left. Right click on the board node and click on attach script. The script for the board is a little lengthy but it's very simple. I will do my best to explain it. The entire script is available in the description on GitHub. But before I explain the script, let me explain how we are storing the board. As you can see in case of a 3x3 board there are 9 tile positions. Out of these one of them will be the empty tile. We are storing an array of rows and each row has an array of elements. For example, in this current state of the board, we will represent this as. We are also storing the position of the empty tile. In this case the empty is at 2, 2 which mean third row and third column since we take the first row to be at 0 and first column to be at 0. Just a disclaimer, the scripts in this project can be optimized a lot, but I have not done it so that it is more readable. Also there are multiple ways to implement this behavior this is just one which I thought of. Back to the script, we have a few export variables which we can modify to change the size of the board, size of each tile, and the slide duration of each tile. Here the default is a 4x4 board and tile size is 80. With the slide duration 0.15 seconds. These export variables are available in the inspector so you can change the values without going to the script every time. We need to set the tile scene in the inspector, so drag the tile scene to the tile scene variable area. Next we have the board state, and the tiles objects, we also store the empty position. And a boolean is animating which is true when any of the tiles are still sliding on the board and it is false when there is no motion on the board. The variable tiles animating is a variable which we will use to set the is animating variable to true or false. We also need to store the move count, and two booleans one for whether we want to show the numbers on the tiles and one to store the entire background texture of the board. We have a main game state variable which can have one of three possible values not started or started or one which we will use to do different actions based on the current game state. The game started, game 1, and moves updated signals are emitted when the game starts, game ends and count of move changes. The first function genboard is responsible for generating a new solved board. What we are doing is looping across each row and each column and adding a value to the board like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. till the last tile. The last tile is given a value of 0 which is our empty tile. We also have to instance our tile object for each tile on the board and set its position according to the tile size and we also set its number value. The two signals of each tile are connected to respective functions in the board. The next function is board solved returns either true or false. It returns true when the board is in the solved state, that is when the number on each tile in the board is in the correct order and when the empty tile is in the bottom right position. The function print board is a debug function used to print the board in the output window and is not visible in the final game. Value to grid gives us the column and row of the tile which has the same number as value. The function get tile by value return the actual tile object, which has the number as value. The ready function is an internal go at function that is called when the scene is ready and loaded, here we update the tile size based on the size of the board so that it fits perfectly. And we generate a random board. If you have any doubt regarding the code you can join the discord server, link in description and ask any queries. 
The main function here is on tile pressed which is called when any of the tiles is pressed. First we check if any of the tiles are still in motion if they are then we return from the function otherwise we continue with the logic. Secondly if the game is not started, then we scramble the board and set the game state to started, we also emit the signal game started. If the game state is 1, then we set the state to started, reset the moves, again scramble the board and emit game started. This happens if you have solved the board and want to play the game again. Next we need to get the position of the tile that was pressed. We do this using the function value to grid. We also the posit an of the empty tile in the board. We only continue the logic if we have clicked in the same row or same column as the empty tile, since only then should the tiles move. The variable dir stores the relative direction of the pressed tile from the empty tile. The start and end variables store the leftmost and rightmost tile in that row or the topmost and bottommost tile in the column. Then we loop through each tile from the end to the start variable. And we slide it according to the dir variable. Is animating is set to true and the number of tiles animating is incremented. I know this is a little lengthy code for a beginner game, but since it's a board based game there is more code regarding the position of the tiles. Comment down below and like the video if you want me to do basics of script video. This only changes the tiles visually, but the actual state of the board is still the same. Now we will slide the board state. The logic here is in two parts one for when the tile pressed is in the same row and when the tile pressed is in same column. The slide itself can be towards left, towards right, towards top and towards bottom. To calculate the number of moves made we store the board in a variable old board. The function slide row and slide column do exactly what they mean. I will explain slide row later since slide column is similar to slide row. After sliding the row or column, we check the number of moves made, and add that to the move count. We also have to emit a signal moves updated since the move count has changed. To check if the board is solved we use is board solved and if it is we set the game state to 1 and emit the game 1 signal. The function is board solvable returns whether the given board can be solved or not. It uses the algorithm from Wikipedia to decide whether the board can be solved or not. I won't go in depth of this algorithm. Scramble board is used to scramble the board to a state such that it can be solved. In this function we first reset the board, which resets the move count, and tile position. Next we shuffle the board and check if it is solvable, if so then we have our scrambled board otherwise we keep shuffling and keep checking if it can be solved. Again here the code is a bunch of for loop for each row and column and basic if statement checks. The reset board resets the move count, and resets the numbers in the board to the solved state i.e 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 in order. It also sets the tile position of each tile in the board to the default state. The set tile position is a helper function to set the position of the tile in the given row, column, and with given value. The next function is for handling keyboard support. To add the keyboard input, click on project then project settings, then input map and add the four actions move left, move right, move up, move down. For each one add W, A, S, D according to the action. The function process is an internal Godet function and runs every graphical frame, here we check which keyboard key is pressed we use it to get the tile adjacent to the empty tile in the direction of DIR.
In slide row, there are two possibilities sliding towards left and sliding towards right. Consider the row with value 7, 8, 0, 1. Here the click tile is 8 and the empty tile is 0. So we need to slide towards right to get the result 7, 0, 8, 1. Here the start is 7, pre is 8, and post is 1. In the result the position of start and post is same, and that of pre and 0 is swapped. Similarly when we slide towards left, the pre and end position remain same, and the 0 and post posit and swap. The function on tile slide completed is called whenever a tile finishes sliding. In this function we decrement the number of tiles animating by 1, and if it is 0 we set the is animating to false. Reset move count function is very simple, we set the move count to 0 and emit the signal moves updated. Set tiles numbers is also a helper function which sets the number visibility for all tiles on the board to true or false. The function update size, recalculates the size of each tile whenever we change the size of the board. Here we also reset the board, move count, and set the game state to not started. The last function is update background texture which changes the entire background image for all the tiles, we will use this function later in the settings to change the texture based on an image. Quick note, in the last video I had set the anchors of the tile to full rect, but we need to rectify. It so go to the tile scene. Click on the tile node, in the layout choose top left. Do the same for the number node, color rect node, label node, and panel node. Click on the tile node and in the margin, set the right and bottom to 64. Now we need to set up the mouse events. So click on the number node, in the mouse group, choose ignore as the filter. Do the same for the color rect, label, and panel. Now click on the sprite node, in the transform group, reset the position to 0, 0. In the offset group, uncheck the option centered. Then click on the board scene, and run it by pressing F6 or click the second play scene button and choose the board scene. Now when you click on any tile the game will start and you can slide the tiles. So that it's for part 2. Thanks for watching. If you like this video make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for the next part. Be sure to click the notification bell too so you get notified when it releases.